G'day guys, this is just like the, the part two video, so to speak, on my Rubik's Cube solving robot. I had a previous one, hopefully you've watched that, a bit solving the cube. Uh, this is just going to give you a little bit more details about it and a couple of little tips and tricks, which I learned along the way when I was um, printing it. Uh, obviously it's a 3D printed object, and hopefully if you are looking at building one, which I'd recommend because it's nice and easy, um, like the process a bit earlier for you. Now I've just got to give a great shout out to the designers of this, uh, Optavinto or whoever they are. They've got a really good assembly instructions. They've got a really good uh, list of stuff, hardware items to purchase. Um, it's fantastic detail, really easy to follow. So basically the nuts and bolts of it, so to speak, we have our 3D printed parts. Uh, these are all free to download. I printed these on a cheap uh, Crowley Ender 3 printer so it wasn't a high-end printer or anything like that um, then we have some purchase parts obviously it's my servos it's got a cheap webcam and something a little bit which I hadn't played around before with I think it's called a maestro servo controller at the back there if you can see that there which has all the servo leads and it has uh, the that goes back into the Raspberry Pi which is located in this 3d printed cover i put on the back of the raspberry pi touch screen interface now you don't have to use a raspberry pi to run the software for this it will quite happily run off a, a windows based laptop which i originally did but you know to set the calibrations and stuff like that up with on it uh, but it was all nice and straightforward and then i sort of just wanted to extend it a little bit further and make it a nice standalone uh, sort of project uh, something that could be put up on the shelf and people go, oh wow, that's cool. Oh, that's what you can do with a 3D printer. Now, like I've just touched on before, it has some rather cheap servos, which are easily available. It's running a Raspberry Pi Model B. I'll go into that a little bit more details in a minute. And just for the user interface, it's just the, you know, the Raspberry Pi touchscreen interface. Um, a couple of tips and tricks before I'd even embark on this project uh, with your 3d printer i would test your print off a quite easily available little uh, test piece which uh, to check the accuracy of your 3d printer because if it's some of these parts do require a nice fit if they're too tight you're going to be hours sanding stuff so one of the if you do print off a test object and you think that's good probably the first thing i would recommend printing off uh, is the, the, the carrier, so to speak, these two parts. Make sure they're a nice fit. If they're super tight, um, or maybe look at your settings on your printer. Or oh, I had to do a, a little bit of sanding. Um, wasn't a great deal, just some coarse sandpaper. Probably took five minutes on each one, just to make it a, like a nice smooth operation. The rest of it regarding the printing um, is pretty straightforward. There's no special settings or anything like that in particular. particular. Just um, one another little tip, like I'm quite relatively new to 3D printing. I've got only a cheap printer. Um, the bolts which are used to secure this main section together, um, all 3D printed. Just a top tip, I made a bit of a mistake i didn't have enough infill on my bolts and when i went to tighten them up obviously there wasn't enough infill so they broke so just regarding my uh, slicer settings i increased the infill i think to 40 percent and an extra layer on the wall thickness and then these are can be tightened up nice and snugly without breaking the end off so that's probably the main trickiest part about the 3d printer bar the amount of filament it uses i think it was about 800 900 grams of filaments so almost a roll oh, i just used uh, some cheap filament i had it was actually being sold as red filament it came out a little bit pinkish so i wasn't going to use it for another project so i thought hey why not use it for this so like i mentioned on before what it does it takes a snapshot takes 12 photos of each side of the rubik's cube into here where the grip is manipulating it around via the cheap little webcam at the back there which is available on ebay uh, then it sends that information into the Raspberry Pi or if you're, which is running Windows IoT um, which is I found a little bit tricky to set up my biggest problem was I was originally trying to run it all off a Raspberry Pi model 
three B plus. Um, and I don't think Windows IO two is really set up for it, so I had to go back to a which I had a Model B, um, and then it loaded on quite successfully. I spent quite a few hours trying to get the Windows IO T to run on the Raspberry Pi Model B plus. There are people out there which have said they've done it. It's above my basic levels of computer skills. So yeah, I've got all that running up and well. I've got the calibrations all saved into the Raspberry Pi all fine. That was all nice and easy. Uh, I've got my genuine Raspberry Pi interface. I got a, made a, found off Thingiverse a nice little cover and bracket and printed that off as well. And just made a couple of little stands and screwed it all onto a, an old chopping board just so it was stand alone. So that's basically the nutshell of the Rubik's Cube, the 3D printable Rubik's Cube. Uh, as I said, a big shout out to the guys which have designed it. They've got to check out their website. I'll put a link in the comments below. Uh, it's a nice fun project. It's great to see that it's got some rack and pinion um, gears working on there. They all printed out nice and fine. Um, if you've been thinking about it, uh, you've got some surveys lying around. Maybe you, you don't need a Raspberry Pi. You can run it off a Windows laptop by the USBs. That's a cool little project. And everyone goes, oh, that's cool. Um, okay, so if you've got any questions, any thoughts, put them in the comments below. I've got, again, another shout out to the, to the guys uh, behind uh, designing this. I had a couple of quick questions, which I emailed them off. Uh, via their website and they were super quick to respond uh, lots of great tips they gave um, yeah and I also put the link on Thingiverse where you can also download all this information but my recommendation would be to jump onto this guy's website they've got some other cool projects on there too uh, 3D printed of all stuff so no it's been a nice little project it all works um, big thumbs up to those guys okay thanks for watching guys bye